I talk you good. Talk good yeah, you talk I good. I talk bad. No, you talk good. Conrad we, talk real good. Bad talk do mouth coming out of. <laughs> I thought it was good talk. This was fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. well. I hope the listeners think so. Oh, <laughs> Christ. Make it quick. We'll do a little. I say that every week we say, oh, we'll, we'll do a short one, and we never do. Two hours later. Two hours later. Oh, hello, everybody, and hello, listeners. Come in, put your feet up, sit on a toadstool. In, I think we've done the fairy tale forest idea before. Um, doesn't matter. Hello, Jonathan! Hi, how are you? How am I? Yeah. I'm Holmesy, 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 Holmesy. So Holmesy, 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 Holmesy. Today. Uh, that was to the tune of I'm Horny. I'm Horny. Hey. Yeah. I'm not Horny, no. No, but I, I changed it to Holmesy because Horny has an H and an O in it, and, and so does Jonathan Holmes has an H and an O in it. Hmm. Practically the same word. A lot of things are happening that make me think I am the center of the universe today. <laughs> uh, a Japanese man, according to Tumblr, is handcrafting a sculpture from a banana. <laughs> and it's my face he's crafting onto the banana. As it, it just should is. Be. I, how does he know? We've I, never met. I see a lot of statues in life, uh, a lot of sculptures. A lot of things chiseled in marble, hewn in stone, wrought in iron. And I'm furious that they're not your face. Venus de Milo, furious. It should be you up there with no arms. The thinker, I want you sat on a rock, punching your chin. Michelangelo's David, get your balls and penis out, Jonathan. You said it so calmly. People know you're joking, though, but you sound really serious sometimes. I am. My, my balls and penis are already out, for the record. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Just because? If you have to ask, Holmes, you'll never understand. No, that's probably true. you got to get with I... the program, Jonathan. Cars! Cars! cars. Why movie. don't cars have your face? Like, just raised in the steel of the hood of the car. Just, like, embossed. Just your grinning face. It would be... <laughs> well, you know. Fantastic. Would... Horrifying. Disgusting. You know, that uncanny valley or the feeling. Green, the Green Goblin truck in Maximum Overdrive. Why aren't there trucks with just your big green... <laughs> Goblinous face, Jonathan. I want your face green mm. with a purple pointy hat on the front of every American freight truck in America. Every American freight truck in America? Yes. In America. So get to work on that, Jonathan. I will try to make it so I am the most famous man on the planet. That's my. Sure. Ju- that's what I want. <laughs> That's what we're all working towards here. I'm really not going to do that. We're going to help your career, Jonathan, <laughs> by, by making you the truck man. <laughs> Imagine that. The face of trucks, literally. Just all trucks. All Just... trucks. Doesn't matter He's... what you carry. It doesn't matter what your freight is. Jonathan Holmes is there beside you. He's with you every step of the way. <laughs> some 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 people do manage to become that famous. Think about uh, all the money we have. It's got uh, just human faces on it of guys long dead, so no Jesus longer Christ, relevant. Another guys. fine example of a of a pop culture icon who managed to elevate himself to a sort of global stage. Yeah, Mr. Jesus. He's uh yeah. he's on all sorts of stuff. So what you're saying, Jonathan, is that we need to put your face on money and. Holy relics. <laughs> no, of course not. Uh, I passed a, uh, a laundromat called Mr. Jesus today. Just wanted to 
throw that out there. Let's talk about uh, not me. It gets a little. I don't know what to say about that me. That gets you know? whites so, whiter uh, than the Holy Spirit. Like, is that what they do in Mister Jesus's? I wonder what they do. It's uh, it wasn't open. I, I was hoping it was a pizza place because that would be good pizza for sure. If they're claiming it's Jesus level, is that immaculate dry cleaning? <laughs> I guess I'll, I'll go. I'll look into yes, it for you. Do find out. I, I want to know about Mister Jesus's. I wonder if I'm even right or if I'm just dreaming. <laughs> my, my That's always the me. worst. When, when you, you, ha- you have a memory and you don't know if mm. it's actually a memory. It's actually pretty easy for me now because I, I remember maybe one dream a month tops. Really? How come? I have no idea. I just I, I mean, I know I have dreams. My wife tells me that I talk to people and conduct site business in my sleep <laughs> what kind of business just i don't know talking to people site, about really. structoid shit yeah in your sleep in my sleep wow that's incredible i'm not surprised but it, it is uh it's validating that was an insult you... <laughs> how was that an insult oh, i'm not surprised the way destructoids run that you're doing it in your sleep that's what you just said jonathan I, 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 thought, I meant that conrad is so you know into it, into the job. It's getting so much done. I don't think it's an Inuit. It's American bread. <laughs> yeah, my, my heritage is actually is German. Are you German Zimmerman? Zimmerman? No, it's Conrad no. Zimmerman. Oh, he's not German Zimmerman. <laughs> mm. <laughs> the whole nation problem we got on the podcast um, this week. Yeah. yeah, this episode started poorly. Uh, and has reached a level of mediocrity <laughs> that I'm not comfortable with. Well, maybe we should talk about some video games. Let's do that. Um, uh, okay. I just got the uh, Hitman HD trilogy, actually, that just showed up like moments before the show. And so I, I popped it open while you were sitting there talking about homes and religious icons. And um, It's more or less the same thing. Yeah, right. It's gorgeous. Like, just the packaging is really, it's a really nice presentation. Uh, They did an art book thing with it. And they incorporated the game case into the art book. So you pull the cardboard sleeve off and you've just got this, you know, kind of nice hardbound book. And you pull it open and it's got your pages with the art book in the front and your game discs in the back. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it's really quite lovely and it's very stylish. It's got, the the, the cover is this sort of... um, uh, silhouette of Agent 47, black and, you know, his red tie coming off, pointing down, forming the eye in the hit. And it's just a really, it's the sort of thing I'd like to put on a shelf, actually. It's classy. That's cool. I might have and to buy that. And it's got the actual game manual and codes all loose inside, so, you know. Yeah, just <laughs> just tumbling out everywhere. Right. <laughs> yeah, but... Stained uh, with a bit of semen from somewhere. Really beautiful. So I'm looking forward to seeing if the uh, the you know HD game is as nice as, as the package that they put together. Mm. It's quite pretty. Is, uh, what's the art like in the art book? Oh, uh, let's see here. What we got? Yeah, it's a uh, uh, a really creepy face with guns and knives for teeth. There's an axe in there. It's like this what? demon head thing. It's the the caption says a dance with the devil. There's a, oh, you'd like this, there's a a sprite art tribute to the Hitman series from Jude Buffum in here. That's pretty cool looking. Uh, Yeah, just some really cool, like, poster designs and uh, all sorts of neat neat stuff. These really beautiful art, actually. That's like, I don't know how many pages that is, it doesn't, the pages aren't numbered, and I'm not going to count them, but. Seems like more than ten. Oh, yeah. Yeah, quite a bit more than 10. Like, maybe 15, 20. Yeah, but that's sure. double-sided, so, you know. I, I don't know. That's cool. Is that out yet or not? Yeah, it came out yesterday. Uh-huh. Um, you know, so the review copy showed up. They today. rushed that. Oh. Rushed that out to you. Yeah. Um, well, it always worries me, too. I mean, you know, it's, I, I can't ever tell if it's because sometimes stuff from Square Enix just takes a little bit longer for them to get it out, or if they're afraid people are going to hate it when, you know, it's this to the wire, or the day after that we get the review copy. 
yeah, it could go either way with them. I think they just don't care. <laughs> really, they they just they shove it in, just throw it in the mail whenever, which is fair enough. Talk they were with... thoughtful enough to send me an email letting me know it was coming like a week in advance. So, talking of art things, mm-hmm. ten art books for Fire Emblem Awakening showed up here today. What? I don't want any of them. <laughs> I want all of them. I mean, they're not art book books. They're kind of, I mean. I'd say that's it, 10, if I'm being generous, 10 pages, you know, folded over for double and then stapled through. So they're almost like a cross between a book and a pamphlet. Mm. I don't know why they're here. <laughs> is it 10 of the same book slash pamphlet? It's all or the it... same. Oh, I thought there was 10 separate ones. No, it's all the same. There's a Im- slightly embossed cover raised up. Um whole bunch of characters I don't know, because I've not played the game yet. None of them are you, Jonathan. So I'm <laughs> fucked off about that. I'll, that's a series I'll never... I'm looking in the book, Jonathan. Mm-hmm. Let's have a look. Fire Emblem Awakening. Okay? Mm-hmm. First page, we've got Charom. Uh, it's not your face. I'm furious. Uh, Marth on the second page, Jonathan. Uh-huh. It's hard to tell because he's wearing stuff over his eyes, but I can tell from the colour from him. Not to be racist, it ain't you, Jonathan. I do have an off-white sort of colour. Yeah, he is he's whiter than me, and I'm a pasty fuck. That's so pretty white. It's, it's whiter than white. It's so white, Mr. Jesus cleaned his face himself. <laughs> uh, it's not you, Jonathan. I right. am, at this point, livid. <laughs> Scroll over. Sumia. Now, as much as I'd like to see you in suspender stockings and a very, very short skirt, Jonathan, it's not you. I am beside myself with rage. Frederick. On the next page, not you. Loads of hair, not you. Terrible. Disgusting. I am am wretched right now. Those are attractive... Uh, not particularly uh, original, but definitely imaginative designs. Lunku! Uh, mm. Lunku! Lunku. A swordsman raised in Regna Ferox, where Kahan Basilios has vouched for his skill. Not his skull, his skill. While cool and curt around most people, the very sight of a woman turns him beet red. So that that description sounds exactly like you, Jonathan. Uh, I was I hopeful. I mean, you are you're a, a fame. Your your sword play is renowned throughout the kingdom, especially in Regna Ferox. And Khan Basilio speaks very highly of you in our conversations. Um, and of course, you're you're famous for turning beet red whenever you see a woman, even if she's five hundred miles away and you look at her through a telescope, you go bright as red as a beet. Uh, but it's not you. It's this Lonku prick who's clearly they based him on you. But it ain't you. He looks that much like me. I am. He looks nothing like you. He just. <laughs> I'm. Just, I'm saying that he's, he sounds like you, but he's not you. Disgusting. <laughs> I'll never be in a Nintendo game. I, Next I do... guy. Mm. He's. You know. He's got a uh, very tan skin. This is looking hope. Oh shit, he's got Super Saiyan hair. Ah, oh, it's called Vake. And that ain't you, Jonathan. Oh, turn the page. And oh, we're going to do all of them, don't you worry. <laughs> Sully! Sully! It's neither you nor the old pederast from Uncharted. It's a woman. And it's not you. Is it a woman or a. It's hard to tell the difference. With some of these characters. It's not you. Nor is Cordelia on the next page. Grotesque. Nowy? Are you called Nowy sometimes, Jonathan? No. No, you've not got pointy elf ears, have you, either? And you you don't wear a bra with a tie. A a bra with a bow tie she's wearing. That sounds really cute. And two belts. And nothing Mm. else. Who wears two belts? Two, that just enhances the nakedity. And she looks about 12. Lissa. 
That ain't Jonathan Holmes. I'm annoyed. Churchy. It's not you. Churchy? That's the name? A, she's got a suit of armour with suspenders on for her greaves. She's got, like, the shin plates uh-huh. held up by suspender stockings, bare old thighs, full plate armour up top. That's just stupid. Why aren't you wearing that, Jonathan? I'm very disappointed. And you're not yeah. Validar, either. And that's it. That's the whole book. I throw it on the wall. And Dang the others, it. the other ones as well. Woof. That was a, quite a plop. Fucking annoyed! No one sends me stuff if it doesn't have you on it, Jonathan. It's Did you get cool. a Hyrule Historia in the mail, Jim? No. You should get one. They I should send you one. If they send me one and you're not in it, I'll burn it. Well, funny you should mention that. There is a character who I think people will think it's like me, kind of. He's got hair, but it looks like a toupee. And his skin is kind of gray. And he's got wild eyes and a big chin, but not in a handsome way. And like a, <laughs> he's he's troubling looking. Uh, he's an unused character from uh, Skyward Sword, this uh, Hyrule Historia book. Actually, the first sixty pages are just Skyward Sword. So I hope you like Skyward Sword. I sure do. And he was going to be a guy who was going to walk around the the city of Skyloft and clean it. And the the details about him are incredible. Such as, he lives in a private home for two. He is a man who likes things clean. He is around 20 years old. He is OCD and sensitive, constantly shaking his hips. The dusters, are they in the way? <laughs> yeah, <it's, laughs> this is the, the stuff they're saying about this guy, very seriously. Um, his pinky should not bend. The idea is to give him feminine hands without emphasizing the extended pinky stereotype. He uses different kinds of tongs to pick up different kinds of garbage. If he comes, in, uh, he comes across garbage unexpectedly, he avoids it in a dramatic fashion, and they show him like uh, somehow like backwards dashing with his ass uh, moving away from a little poop that he discovered. And he looks very... Uh, it says, even birds run away, and there are all these birds flying away from the poop in him. This is a great character, Jim. You should get up on this guy. He could have been the new Tingle. He sounds they, fantastic. Uh, yeah, they cut him out. It's, it's a, a shame. shame. It sounds like they put a lot of effort and thought into him. There's like seven different designs for just how his tongs will fit into his trash barrel and his butt. It's, he's got slightly different butt wiggle designs. Huh. Check it out. Yeah. Hyrule Astoria. Buy it. It's always interesting to see just the amount of work that goes into just incidental NPCs and things. Stuff written down that you'll never really appreciate watching. Like, we, we're not to... If he was in the game, we wouldn't be able to appreciate that they worked on six different tongs. Oh, and, no. You'd, you'd see him for a second and be like, haha, and then run yeah. away. You know, yeah, they had that's... rules about what his pinky can do. <laughs> All that kind of stuff. It really makes you think, Jonathan. Mm-hmm. It does. It, it's so, there's something very existential about that, Jonathan. There is. Yeah, I've been feeling pretty existential lately, Jonathan. Really, Jonathan yeah. Holmes. Tell me more. Sometimes you get this feeling that the universe is big, <laughs> don't you? I do. You just sometimes you look up at the sky and think the universe is big, and we're to respect that. And also make money off it. <laughs> Hear me out. How can you make money off that? Yeah. Mm, what do you think of planetariums? Mm-hmm. You like planetariums? Who doesn't? There's one in Mississippi. It's shit. Quite frankly. Um, still called Pluto a planet. My, my local one. We went there. Uh, had the whole... Like, the, the, the bendy ceiling and they project space onto it with these faded projection slides uh making references to things from the early 90s because it was out in 1993 that's when this thing was built that's when the show was made they've not updated it since 
uh, full of old jokes about Trekkies. Uh, it's dreadful, <laughs> but it is about the level of commitment you expect in the middle of Mississippi. Um, and if that's what they're charging people for, Jonathan, we can do better. Now, I had this idea when you were talking earlier about how you sometimes think people believe you to be the centre of the universe. Why be the centre of the universe when you can have the universe in your own house? Whoa, how it, do you do that? Uh, by me and Conrad coming round to your house, Jonathan, and turning it into a planetarium. Oh. It's a great idea, right? Me and, John, uh, me and Conrad, right? Come round to your house, buckets of black paint, paint everything. Uh, the ceiling, the walls, your television, windows, furniture. I want it all black. Uh, some would say it'd be easier to just move everything out, but we'll just paint everything so it all looks black. Uh, get glow-in-the-dark paint. We've still got some left over from when I painted the ghost brick last week. And I've been thinking of a way to make... of like Because we want them painted like stars in your apartment. I was thinking of getting some homeless people, putting them in your apartment, and getting them to masturbate with their hands covered in glow-in-the-dark paint. <sighs> so that as, they, as they're furiously giving themselves the vinegar strokes, they're just splashing paint off their hands onto your floor and ceiling and walls. And when they're finished, when they've, you know, sp splackered uh, all down their thighs... Uh, you, there'll be a lovely starlit scene in your apartment, Jonathan. It's a uh, people don't want semen on their ceilings and floors. Well, it's mostly glow in the dark paint that's been splashed off by the vigorous hand motion gestures. If, if you're concerned about, you know, like how it's going to look, we could maybe get Neil deGrasse Tyson in there to make sure that you know everything <laughs> is astronomically accurate. We could. We should we should ask Neil deGrasse Tyson if he's interested in overseeing about ten homeless men masturbating in a dark room with glow in the dark paint, <laughs> just to How see are... if it's a genuine um, space scene. Jonathan Holmes. Are the homeless men? What's their motivation? You just uh, just because they're homeless doesn't mean they want to be in my house masturbating with glow in the dark paint. I don't think. <laughs> if we tell them there's meth in it for them, they will. <laughs> Maybe there's a lot of home types of homeless people. Some people are just out of work. Yeah, but, but those aren't the ones we want. Yeah, I'm, I'm we're just... looking for creative minds, artistic <laughs> types that don't fit into the mold of society. Homes. Mm, there's plenty of them These too. These are the guys that turn their backs on society before society could turn their backs on them. They're thinkers. They're creators. They're builders. They live under a bridge. <laughs> We go, to, we, we go under a bridge, Jonathan, all of us together, armed with hockey sticks with razor blades taped to them, I would advise. You know, gather around some of the meth heads and skag heads outside, like gathered around a burning trash can and say, Hello lads, do you want to earn some meth or some drink? Whatever. Whatever drug you want, Holmes can get it for you. He works in a hospital. All you got to do is come around and pleasure yourselves. It's hardly work. Uh, just to help us get our observatory off the ground. Our planetarium. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Sorry? You can't say these things out loud. This is like George <laughs> Lucas dialogue. You can write it down, but when you actually say it, it's it's you can't say that. You know? It doesn't sound like human talk at all. Can't! I don't think you can't. Can. Don't no. tell me can't! Don't like being told I can't do things, Jonathan. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was rude. Right. Yeah, it was. I'm glad you apologized. Now, back, I mean back I to the homeless it. man whacking away in your black painted apartment. Uh, we painted your dog black as well. Um, especially over its eyes. Oh, no. Uh, ten homelessness. They've splacked off. Um, there's now a beautiful starlight scene. And the smell of cum. Ugh. Which is what space smells like. 
Ooh, really? I thought I, I've always been told that the absence of smell is the smell of space. No, actually, um, recently they confirmed that space has a smell, and it smells like. I can't remember what Alex told me they said it smells of, but everything I end up owning and living in ends up smelling of cum. So I'm going to assume space does as well, like everything else in my life. It's, uh, it shows that you're virile. Is that the right word? Virile? It shows I'm fucking bored. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we, we're spending far too long on that. I'm, I'm sorry. more interested in, you know getting the tennis balls and the uh, just other round things, bowling balls, um, space hoppers, that we're tied up with string and nailing to your ceiling to make the universe. What do you reckon on that? Uh... It's going to be great. So we <laughs> we got all the planets arranged. Um, how many are there? We've got Mars, Earth, Saturn, wind, water, fire, and heart. And they're all hanging up in the ceiling, or from your ceiling. And we've got some torches that we've kind of placed around. Now, we invite families around. We say, Boston's very own planetarium, made up by Jonathan Holmes, Dr. Jonathan Holmes, spaceologist, PhD. Uh, you know, 50 bucks per head. Come on in. Uh, live life among the stars. <laughs> live life among the stars as you've never seen it before. And we play that Zirkus Bracus Bracus song. The one that goes... Da, 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 like that. Boom, 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 boom. And me and Conrad are like doing narration. Because it'd be like a big show. We've got all the people... Uh, <laughs> we got all the people lying on their backs so that it's like an observatory planetarium type thing. They're all lying on the, their backs on the floor of your apartment. I'm reckoning about 30 people. Um, you know, families, children, mothers, fathers. They're all lying on the floor of your apartment while we're playing Zacchaeus Bracus Bracus, uh, Rick Flair's music. Uh, and we say, space, that it is big. <laughs> It was invented in 1984 with the Big Bang. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. And on that day when there was nothing, Jonathan Holmes was born. Boom, 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 boom. And you come out, Jonathan. 1984? You come out, Jonathan, uh, wearing a silver dressing gown and nothing else. Just a silver dressing gown. It's all closed up, so don't worry. No one can see anything. And you start walking grandly over the families while they're lying on their backs looking up. And you're, like, stepping over their heads. And we say, boom, 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 boom. Jonathan Holmes. Boom, 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 boom. Jonathan he is the universe! <laughs> Me and Conrad start dancing around you, showering you with rose petals, while you're, like, raising your arms, and you've got your legs, like, really splayed open over the head of one of the patrons, and they're looking up at you, and they're just mesmerised. They think it's fantastic. Oh, that sounds it's terrible. Ever seen. And you look up in the sky and shout, I created the universe. I created the universe. While we shower you with rose petals, and we're just going, Jonathan Holmes, he invented the universe. <laughs> he is the universe. And you, like, pull off your dressing gown and tattooed on your back, is, like, just all the solar system. Like, uh, Rag Fines in Red Dragon. And you shout, I am the Red Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> and me and Conrad are, like, on our knees at this point, like, bowing up and down, waving. <laughs> just supplicating ourselves to your awesome form. 
Exactly. We say, you are the Red Dragon, and you, Jonathan Holmes, look down at the children who are, like, (laughs) on their backs looking up at you, and you shout to them, I am changing, do you see? And at that point, we bring up all the lights in the house, right? And there's just photos of you all on the ceiling that they couldn't see before because it's black. It's just photos of you bare-chested, flexing your muscles. And you shout, I am changing, do you see? And me and Conrad are just, ah, like terrified of your awesome power. And, and you raise a fist up in the air and shout, I invented the fucking universe. We've all got to do everything I say. Not my nature to, uh, I mean, it, it, it really take a lot of, I don't know. A lot of rehearsal, I guess. Well, I mean, this was 1984. This is, you know, I mean, you, you look at the progression of, of, of all things, and they all seem to move towards a more placid center after a lot of rage. I mean, you look at other God stories in history. Here we had, you know, Old Testament, vengeful, angry God, you know, moving into, you know, the the flood and wiping out and saying, well, not doing that again. So this is like your vengeful period that we're representing here. I mean, uh, th- this is the anger and passion of youth. This is the, the violent energy of creation that, uh, that you're putting forth and, and, and giving a representation of uh, to the people of Boston. It's, it's the big bang, not the little baby fart. <laughs> I am a little baby fart. It's very hard for me to take on a vengeful... You're an actor. You're an actor. You're just huh? recreating the passion of the Big Bang for the lovely families. So anyway, I mean, that, that was just the Big Bang. The house lights come back down. You go back, you know, into the kitchen or wherever. Put your robe back on. Uh, while we invite the children and the families, the audience, to sit up and cross their legs. And we wheel out a television for the cinema. Because what good science museum is complete without a 3D IMAX experience? Mm Hmm? Exactly. (laughs) Uh, I don't know. This is all in my house, right? Yeah. Uh, I'll be honest with you, Jonathan. We can't fit a fully 3D IMAX cinema in your apartment. Oh, we can. It's pretty small here. We will be wheeling out an old tube television from 1997. Uh, but it is a Sony, and it is almost widescreen. But we will still be telling them it's 3D, and we will be giving them 3D glasses to watch. We turn it on, and it's hooked up to a VHS tape, uh, tape recorder. Don't worry, I've got all that worked out. Uh, we stick in the VHS tape and say, ladies and gentlemen, please sit down and watch this informative documentary um, in 3D on the nature of space and, and humanity's long-running struggle with its own insignificance in the universe and how it strives for more. Space is big. It's, this is how the documentary starts. That much you know. You have learned, weary travellers, of how the universe was invented by Jonathan Holmes in 1984, who is also the universe. That Big Bang was fucking scary, wasn't it, kids? Don't worry, that bit's over. You won't be seeing that man again. In 1996, the first manned space shuttle went to the moon. Piloting that space shuttle was none other than Jonathan Holmes, a famous astrophysicist and astronaut and fortune teller. He went to the moon in two days in his shuttle. I don't know where this bit's going, John. (laughs) And when he landed on the moon, he gave birth to himself. Whoa. Using computer animation or probably just some modelling clay. Have a model of you, Jonathan, on the moon with a big, like, fat woman's pregnant belly. And the camera whooshes in uh, between its legs. And there's a big blinding light comes out between your legs, vagina-shaped. And it goes in. 
and like all this spankly music plays and then it's just a big white on the screen and it's just photos of your face like thousands of photos of your face Jonathan flying at the screen while me and Conrad are throwing bouncy balls at the kids from behind the television and we're screaming it's in 3D it's in 3D what do you think of that? It's a uh... it's a Holmes meteor shower, kids. It's in 3D. Seriously, cover your noses and eyes because we're throwing these balls quite hard. <sighs> it's a uh... there's a place for it. There's a place for this for sure. Yeah. Um, so that's the. You know, I think maybe we could get Kurt Schilling to throw some some of these balls he's... at the kids. I mean, he's not doing anything, right? He's in the area. He's around, yeah. He's kind I'm sure of he's condo. not busy. <laughs> it was for a fucking block of cheese at the moment. <laughs> so we'll get Kurt Schilling to start really hurling bouncy balls at the kids. So that it's, you know, they're thinking, oh my god, Jonathan Holmes' face. The famous astronaut Jonathan Holmes' face during his metaphysical rebirth on the moon. His face is coming at us. So that's exciting for the kids, isn't it, Jonathan? It is all three dimensions. It, absolutely. So anyway, that's the end of that documentary. We wheel the television back out, bring up the lights. You, Jonathan, sit on the floor, cross-legged, and we each give the kids a photograph of you, Jonathan, and you get to sign them. And that's... We, okay, sorry, yeah. I sign autographs for the kids, yeah. <laughs> Uh, who wouldn't want a signed photograph of the man who both invented the universe and gave birth to himself on the moon metaphysically? It was a revelation for you. You know, children believe things that adults tell them. It's possible that they would believe it and be really unsettled and, and uh, unable to eat that night because they felt like... Because they're so impressed. No, I, I understand. No, no, no. I understand completely. <laughs> like I say, it it can be traumatic when you come face to face with your own like role in the universe, which isn't even a role at all. Um, and we will explain that to the kids I, I, as they leave. You know, we'll sit them down. We'll do a grief counseling session. <laughs> <laughs> we'll assure the kids. We'll sit them all down. We'll say, right now, children. You know, obviously, what you saw here today was. Entertainment, educational, but but it was entertainment. Now it was all true. Um, you know, you can see my PhD, and I'll you know I'll flash him a bit of paper with PhD written on it. Um, obviously, it all happened, uh, and you may be thinking nihilistic thoughts right now because, to be honest, once you've been in the presence of Jonathan Holmes and had him sign a photograph of his own face, you feel kind of worthless in life. Um, Next. There's really nothing left. No, no. I mean, the universe is beautiful. Uh, the universe is majestic. But don't worry about it. Now, fuck off. <laughs> uh, that would leave them feeling a little bit better, I think. That's because they'd have to... They could probably pick up on the tone that it's not real, that I'm not really God, and I didn't really just endorse someone throwing... Well, no, they would have to deal with the truth that adults did just hit them in the face for a while at the museum, Neil, which is just my house. No, the only thing that will negatively affect them there is they won't be able to go back and watch their crappy real-life televisions after experiencing the majesty of 3D. High-definition 3D. You're going to get kids to, to go out and play. I mean, you, you see what's going to happen here. Regular entertainment is just not going to suffice any longer. And they're going to, you know, they're going to look at the televisions and they're going to think, "God, I want to experience 3D." And the only way to do that would be to go out into the world. And maybe, maybe we can inspire, you know, and instill a love and a passion for science, and maybe get some of these kids to hire some bums off of the street to masturbate in their own rooms and build their own planetariums and. I think I think the possibilities here are limitless, and um, I'm I'm really impressed, Holmes. You've you've got a 
You got a great idea here. No, it's not my idea. Inspiring children. A parent will say, hey, kids, do you want to watch SpongeBob te- uh, television programs on our stupid TV? And the par- the kids, like, you know, four-year-olds will look up and say, mother, mama, papa, I have flown with the eagles and you bring me chicken feed. Get the fuck out of my house. I don't think they will say that. Uh, they, they will, because I'll be telling them to say it. I'll say, if you don't say that to your parents next time they turn their televisions on, Jonathan Holmes is coming to get you, and you saw what he did here today. I don't want to be a... He knows where you live. ...bad man, and make a world bad. I don't want to make things worse for the people. The Jonathan Holmes oh. giveth, and the long John, longer than John Silver... <laughs> Bowl bags. I should. Be- it reminds me. Everyone, we need. We need to make sure everyone pays by check, so we have all the addresses of the children. Oh yes, and you can actually go around the house, Jonathan. Because with at Jonathan at Doctor Jonathan Holmes PhD's planetarium, the experience doesn't end when you want it to. How's that for a good tagline? It's. it's just... How how is that value <laughs> for money? Give us your address, and at random times, Jonathan Holmes will come round your house and just, like, scratch his initials into your front door. <laughs> just to let you know he's been. <laughs> it's terrible. It's... Mm, there's so many things that this uh, violates in terms of just the basic human needs that uh, are necessary to feel comfortable. Yeah. Like what? Just, well, like feeling as though your your home and your space isn't going to be invaded, that you won't be around it's semen. It's not their space. We just like said it, it's your space. <laughs> you invented it. <laughs> but that makes them feel terrible. They, it, it, well, it toughens them up. <laughs> it's what kids need. They can't just go through life thinking that everything's okay and Jonathan Holmes won't come for them. It's like building up an effective immune system. Yeah. You know, I, I found out, I was talking to my mom the other week, my parents tried twice to get me chicken pox <laughs> when I was a kid. Like, they found out that one of their friend's kids had chicken pox and took me over to play with them. I can see the logic. It's it's always sounds barbaric on paper. <laughs> I totally yeah, yeah, a little bit, maybe. I had chicken pox twice, I think. Yeah, I still yeah, have I'm one of those guys that, uh, even despite their best efforts, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, or maybe I had such a, a mild case that, like, it wasn't even noticeable. But, yeah, I, I wasn't ill with chicken pox. I didn't have that horrible, itchy experience everyone else had. Which, you know, means I'm going to have a kid. They're going to go to school. A little fucker's going to bring it back to me. It's going to kill me. Yeah. But, you know, it'll be this horrible, hurt. wretched, painful experience that will end in my death. And, you know, I expect my child will be my undoing so i guess that's it's the way it should be yeah it's always the way it should go i think i had chicken pox twice um a rare case of that happening and either my brother or myself or both of us were hospitalized with it i think oh my god um it's very i i have these weird half conscious memories of hospital um internments i can't remember what they they were for Almost like some weird experiments happened on me. Um, I know at one point my testicles were involved. I've still got the pubic scar, uh, which I'll show that to you, Jonathan. Okay. At some point. Pubic scar? Yeah. Well, you know, it's under the under the, the the furry friends. Oh, so it's a testicle scar? No, no, no. It's up above. Up above. In the, the world, so high. Yeah. <laughs> In the, when I in think the, scar, I just think in scar. In the shrubbery, from... right above, I think they went in to get stuff out of one of my bollocks. Oh, okay. Well, when when you said scar, I immediately thought of uh, Uncle Scar, the Lion King. Yeah, yeah just prowl, just... just a little one prowling around on the end of my dick. <laughs> that'd be great. Yeah, that yeah. would be funny. Not, uh, not really what happened though. No, no, it's a real scar. I'm sorry that they cut into your pube. That's all right. (laughs) (laughs) 
Uh, speaking of uh, Disney, they closed a uh, junction point. They closed them. Yeah. Yep. All gone. Feeling feelings? <laughs> no feelings felt, I guess. Well, I like Ward Spencer a lot. I think, I think he's a really smart guy, and he's got interesting ideas, and Epic Mickey neither time ultimately seemed to realize that. Mm. Yeah, I didn't play the second one, but I uh, I did hang around with the guys at Junction Point 2010 at Disneyland. It was weird. And they had some very interesting philosophies towards game design. They uh, Some of the guys there went out of their way to play the worst games they could, but forced themselves to find something good about all of them so they could keep their minds open and sharp. Like, they were really dedicated to kind of the martial art of video game design. It was pretty pretty interesting. But it was also weird that Disney was spending so much money on the marketing of their game in in a way that didn't seem to balance how much money they actually gave them to make the game. I can't remember if I had talked about this on on Podtoid before, but I was playing the game with them, uh, Epic Mickey, the first one. I was like, oh, it's it's pretty cool. So is there going to be like a different way to control the camera to make it like automatically like not go to the wrong place because I just died a bunch of times because the camera was just mm. and they were like uh, we're sorry yeah game's got to come out now they, they like they knew it but they their hands were tied was the, the was the tone I got from it I mean it wasn't like a um, a very hard to find flaw it's not like it didn't come up in playtesting I'm sure but they just had to ship it as it was yeah. and then from what i was told epic mickey 2 didn't do much yeah i don't know how that excuses that. the second one <laughs> really the ah, camera they... was was dog shit in that mm. epic mm. mickey 2 was god awful totally god awful um really was bad and uh, that doesn't mean i'm happy that the studio closed but at the same time specter's probably better off uh, mm. oh yeah i think these people you know they'll I mean, lots of them will go get jobs other places and probably get creative opportunities that maybe Disney wasn't really affording or or who knows. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You, you compare what, like, the ideas they had, like, the, the thing that Epic Mickey was compared to the thing that Epic Mickey is. Mm. I mean, it's night and day. Mm. Uh, you know, I, I, I think most of that game's problems were all things outside of the creative department that the creative department probably didn't have any control over. I'm sure we'll never get the the full story on that, but I don't know. Working for Disney probably isn't the place for for people with real creative minds. <laughs> it's such a shame because they uh, used to be. I mean, they called them Imaginarians or whatever they were called. It was all about creativity in the uh, the classic Disney days. It's sad. Yeah, I mean, I'm certainly, I mean, I'm, I'm more specifically talking Disney Interactive, um, you know, the actual game stuff, uh, just doesn't seem like they, they exist really to be Imaginariums. Mm, I know, it's too bad, maybe that'll change, maybe this'll cause them to change, I don't know, I don't know, maybe. I don't know, the fact they just got rid of their most creative studio. <laughs> yeah, that's not that good of a sign, is it? Yeah, yeah. But they've got Skylanders coming out, or whatever it is they're calling their version, so... Uh, Disney Infinity. Infinity, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. I had the same reaction as everybody else. Not interested. Not interested. Oh, Jack Skellington. Not interested. Not interested. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that uh, I felt the same way about Skylanders. Well, yeah, my my reaction. Well, my my reaction to this is just like my Skylanders was like, what the fuck is this? Who's going to buy this? And then everybody bought Skylanders. Oh yeah. And so I look at Disney Infinity, I'm like, what the fuck is this? Well, it's going to sell a shit ton. Yeah. Like, that's, uh, there's no, it, it will make so much money. I mean, I think it's mostly because I actually was a big fan of Skylanders from the outset and still really like it. Uh, right. And I so mean, I'm I, kind I, of annoyed. <laughs> well, ultimately, Skylanders turned out to be a, a really pretty good product on top of that. Now, if they can create a product that is on the level of Skylanders in terms of quality. You know, that sandbox thing they've got looks really cool. We'll see. Uh, and then with the properties and licenses that are in Disney's control, I mean, I can't imagine it not doing phenomenally well. Yeah. 
I, I think, again, another thing that diminishes my interest is just the characters they're going with. They're a lot more contemporary outside of... Yeah, what say, the fuck is character. Bolt doing there? Why is... <laughs> who... Who? Why are they still pushing Bolt? Bolt was a bad idea from the beginning. Which one even was that? He's the little white dog. Is he electric dog or is he a fast dog? Yeah. Oh, right. Mm. Yeah, like it's it's all contemporary stuff, which is fine. It's all quality stuff, but it's not the stuff that really resonates with myself. Um, And I'm not saying it has to be stuff that resonates with myself. They're not going for me. Um, But if they were to have some of the older, more classic stuff, I'd probably be a lot more into it. I'm guessing they are kind of going for you. You're a man with a child in the house. They they're thinking, oh, this will be something for a guy to buy that he'll like and his kid will like it. The old Sesame Street effect. I don't know. The kid here isn't really Disney either. His Mm. he really likes the Skylander stuff, but something tells me he probably won't be so into the Disney one. Yeah, yeah. I I I think a lot of people are going to feel that way. Sadly, if they did it like strictly Pixar. And and tried to tag along on the the Pixar association with quality, then then they'd have better luck, I think. But I don't know. I'm thinking they might have even had a better idea going the other way. You know, you bring out the like pure old, classics, get yeah. the old school stuff, because that way you get someone like me interested. Well, part of that is though they already have models for a lot mm. of this stuff to a degree i'm sure like I, I, do you is it, do you think it's possible that they could use assets from the films to guide development wouldn't that be easier than trying to recreate these old 2d animations as 3d models oh I yeah think i'm from a starting point position i'm absolutely not faulting their logic i see exactly what they're doing i'm just saying it's not what i'm that interested in yeah you know which is fair enough um whatever it's just don't expect me to cream my jeans over it's, it. It's so weird. I have no particular affection for Disney. There are certain films of uh, from you know, Disney's history and so forth that I really like. Wife hates them entirely. Just just loathes the idea. But the, I I love Disney as an entity. Hmm. Uh, in the early years, through to oh, I don't know, maybe about the last fifteen years, where it was like. It wasn't that they sold uh, entertainment products. They sold an entertainment experience. And so, like, you would go to Disneyland and or Disney World, and it was all about customer service. That's what they sold you. Mm. It's always what they sold was customer service and the Disney experience. And so the games haven't matched up. Well, lots of the product offerings haven't, haven't felt like an experience in a really long time. Um, but I just don't. It's a brand name. They own a ton of great stuff. They can market to all sorts of different audiences with everything. And they're, they're becoming a, uh, a media conglomerate on the level of Sony, mm-hmm. slowly but surely. Mm. In many ways, it's, it's up to other people to pick up the slack, which I feel I do with you, Jonathan, uh, where Disney up. has stopped becoming an experience for children, delighted children all over the world. I am an experience for a delighted you in in Boston. <laughs> it's smaller scale, I grant you, but wait, I'm delighted. But but tsunamis come from the smallest steps in the ocean. That sounded philosophical. It was. It sounded deep, but I'm still puzzling over the idea that I'm delighted. What am I delighted <laughs> about? <laughs> I delight you with my experiences, Jonathan. Uh. Yeah, I mean, I like you a lot. Oh. It's true, I do. Oh. Yeah, facts are facts. These are the facts. Before I forget, someone on Twitter named True Bro, <laughs> you can follow him at Original Bro. Oh, yeah. So good. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry, I, don't, I don't know if I should laugh at them yet, so... Give us the tweet so I know whether it's appropriate for me to laugh at their names. Yeah, what yeah, is, what is it, original bro one? He says, my great-grandma turned 102 today. If you could say happy birthday to her, it would be cool. See, now, now you see? I would feel really shitty if I had laughed openly at original yeah, bros. but he yeah. wants us to say happy birthday to his grandmother on the, the Homeless Men Masturbating with Glow-in-the-Dark <laughs> Paint podcast. 
He wants his 102 year old great grandmother to sit through 45 minutes of, yeah, and then they're really whacking away, I, you know, and they're singing <laughs> splattering all over the place, and then gets a <laughs> See, here's happy the birthday, great grandma. He could have queued Holmes. it up to this point and just, you know, gotten the birthday message out, well, but now you've ruined it. By referencing, so now he's gonna have to dance around the segments where we talk about his 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 uh, grandmother. Oh yeah, my god, what's you've done. Didn't give his real name either. It's just he's gonna come up. So he didn't give his her name either. either. Yeah. So I he's just if... gonna make this poor woman. <laughs> I wonder if she calls him True Bro or Original Bro. You you are a hundred and two years old today, um, and here here is what your life has been leading up to. Madam, is... is he in the room? <laughs> Call the police. <laughs> oh, dear! This person does not care for your welfare. <laughs> 102 years of life have led you to this moment where three men you don't know give an anonymous message to someone we don't know while talking about homeless men masturbating. <laughs> you survived the war for this. Two wars, I think. Two wars. Mm, two world wars, yeah. Yeah, it's not even counting Iraq. No, that was kind of a, a, a smaller scale. But it was a war, absolutely. Not to diminish it. Yeah. So anyway, I wanted to do that before I forgot. But I can ask questions. We can do a short show today. Yeah, but... I could do with, with jetting off, actually. Okay. So That's yeah, it. let's do some questions. Ha- happy <laughs> birthday, by the way. I don't know that we actually <laughs> Bros said that. Grandmother. Yeah. Dude happy- did ask. It was very sweet in a really strange sort of way. Happy birthday yeah. to you, original grand bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Jonathan Blow just announced that... Jonathan Bro. John- <laughs> that uh, he feels that a lot of the games that are getting critical acclaim are the equivalent of dog food. And that video game journalists are just smiling and nodding with mouths full of Alpo, Alpo, Al, Alpo, um, grinning as they eat this terrible slop. Man, he really makes people mad when people here's, say that. Here's a response I have. Uh huh. Of course he said that. <laughs> That's all I've got to say on that. I'm glad he said it. I would, uh, you know, he's putting himself in a position. Where he's got to make something really good now, and hopefully that'll motivate him to make his next game even better. And uh, I like Braid; it's a good game. Not my favorite, but it's not my least favorite. It's pretty, pretty clever. Just not a, uh, you know, doesn't totally fit my idiom. Uh, Alpo is a brand name. Um, Jonathan, I can't afford brand name food on what I make writing about and reviewing video games. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> the questions are coming in. Um, Elemental Shade asks, favorite Pokemon ever? I feel like we get asked that all the time. Whoa, he's asking a lot of questions. Uh, yours is Ekans still, right, Jim? Yeah, original yeah. and best. Mm. Mine's changing all the time. Uh, I don't know. I'll still go with uh, Nosepass for now. And you don't like Pokemon, right, Conrad? It's not that I don't like Pokemon. I just... Not dislike, you just don't. To have. Like, I really enjoyed the first, uh, like, uh, I think I played Red originally. Yeah. I quite enjoyed it. it yeah, I think it's a fine game, game, but I don't have a particular, like, interest in any specific Pokemon. Yeah. Like, yeah. I thought I knew that. I shouldn't have asked, but, you know, we got through it quickly. Yeah. So people will be okay. I didn't realize that uh, Devil May Cry game is so much like... Uh, they live. It's pretty awesome. Oh yeah, yeah. It's uh, there are many direct comparisons you can make to They Live. That makes me feel happy. I want to play that game more now. Um, speaking of Devil May Cry, Chris slash Acharky asks: Any of you guys have a favorite boss battle you really enjoyed? It can be from any game of any boss battle. Jim, your thoughts on that? Boss battle I particularly enjoy. Well, there's many. Mm, it's hard, isn't it? None of which I can remember now, now that I've got a pinpoint one. Uh, the, uh, <sighs> Dragon from Mega Man 2. What a good yeah, boss. Mine, I was actually going to bring up Mega Man 2 also. Yeah, um, that's where it, my brain goes. The right Dragon now. is is a, a big one for me, but I think I like Alien Wily the best. 
Um, just because, I mean, it's not like a particularly fantastic boss fight or anything, but the the, the twist moment. I mean, there, there was really I didn't totally didn't see it coming the first time. It remained awesome every time afterwards. Yeah, I don't know why I love that so much, but that's one of my favorite boss encounters. Yeah, me too. I uh, I talk about it all the time. I think it's like artistic, you know, guys. Artistic. Yeah. Jim, you got one yet? Oh, um, <laughs> I'll just pull out the first one I can think of at the moment, which would be Unalaska from Final Fantasy X. I don't know what it was. I, I, I don't know if I was doing something wrong in the fight, but it took ages. Like, and it had a really awesome build-up, but it took forever. Um, and I'm sure I did something wrong, but it took such a long time that when it was finally over, I was incredibly happy. And I, I always thought Final Fantasy X, for all of the, you know, it's it's got a split fan base on that one. Its boss fights were fantastic. Mm. I thought it had some really, like, big in scale, uh, lengthy, tactical, uh, really nicely presented. Uh, especially the, the fights with Seymour were just, they had fantastic introductions and presentation. Um, so there's some really good boss fights in Final Fantasy X. That come out on the Vita yet? They do that Vita remake yet? Not yet. I'm looking forward to it though. Yeah, that'll probably be the time I I play through that game. Uh, I still haven't played through it. It was the Final Fantasy that kind of, you know, for a lot of people, uh, Skyward Sword was kind of the Zelda that they're like, Ugh. for me, Final Fantasy X was the one that I had so much invested in the Final Fantasy series up until that point, and I liked Final Fantasy IX so much that the changes in X just felt too different. But now looking back on it, it's like nothing compared to where Final Fantasy has gone lately in terms of changing the series for the worse. So, uh, yeah, mm-hmm. I want to get back into that and give it a shot. And I will. Uh, well, Vid Sermon asks, what you gonna do, brother? <laughs> That's probably not the voice he read it in. I'm gonna eat a weird soup as soon as we're done with the show. <laughs> and then try to write three video game reviews. If you're into I... weird soup, I can acquire some of that for you. <laughs> I bet you can, you turkey. Yeah, once I'm done, you know, with the producing the... it. Yeah, once once we've finished you... making the planetarium. Well, I don't understand the whole. People <laughs> want other people to eat stuff that comes out of the penis. I don't know why. <laughs> why would you care if someone else eats it? You know what? What matters is the nerve endings on the genitalia that you got. Well, I think what ma- I think what what it, what it is is that you know that they did it. Why do you want to know that? <laughs> and well, maybe they maybe maybe they know that they did it too. Maybe you tell them. Maybe you don't. But it's power over them because you made them eat something of yours that they would normally eat. <laughs> it's like ass pennies. That's true. As, so it's more like a prank. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, some people were offended last week when I proposed the Jim Sterling Rock Me Tonight uh, cover song video slash uh, musical. Yeah, you do the music and the video, the audio and the video for the uh, Kickstarter. Yeah. They were offended that I thought that they may donate money oh to get your God. blood, semen, and feces. The comments on that. That went, it, that, really, that went down a, a road. It was really interesting. Um, and I, I was like, huh, maybe I was wrong. Maybe it's a bad Kickstarter idea. Nope. Immediately go to Twitter. There's like 15 people being like, I'll do, I'll do anything I can, uh, any price you want for the feces. I want the feces most of all. You know, Or another guy being like, uh, as long as your semen's in there too, and then I can mix them together in order to make a home Sterling clone. You know, like the, the, so the passion. The destructoid using... Listener of Podtoid seems to be disgusted at this implication. <laughs> Whereas my Whereas Twitter the... followers are totally on board. Yeah, the people that are into Podtoid just for you, Jonathan. They're all about the semen and the spunk. So basically, yeah. Destructoid users, we love them to a, you know, every man jack of them. Um, very refined, have dignity. Your fans, Jonathan. I don't know. I don't know what you've done to attract the kind of dregs of society that you clearly attract. I don't know what kind of degenerate behaviour you broadcast. 
But mm. clearly, I mean, maybe it's all those homeless men you invite around your house to masturbate, and this Don't do that. this talk of of eating semen that you seem to think is so good. I don't think it's good. <laughs> Uh, I think it's because... What I do mean, you do with the rats? <laughs> I don't do anything with rats. It's a it's expression for when things have gone wrong. You, yeah. go, you make rats. me sick. <laughs> Jiminy Christmas. Uh, CJ oh, Melendez... Oh, let's not let get Jiminy Christmas involved. <laughs> that poor boy's been through enough. He sure has. Yeah, uh, after what you did to him. I didn't do anything to Christmas, <laughs> Jiminy. CJ Melendez asks... Similar to celebrity deaths, it seems that game studios close in threes or more. What do you think about this? I, it does worry me a lot, actually, that um, THQ closed, Junction Point closed. Um, now weird stuff is happening with Grasshopper. They're they're merging with Gung Ho, which I don't know a ton about Gung Ho, but it never seemed to me that they shared Grasshopper's um, kind of work edict Grasshopper is, of course, all about. Um, I think it actually says on their logo, "Punk isn't dead" or something like that. They've they've been focused on being weird on purpose. He sold out. Fun about it. He sold out. Suda sold out. Did he sell out? Maybe he did. Sold I don't know. Out. It's worrisome. Collected the paycheck. That's not very yeah. punk rock. Well, Stuck it's good in to the get. Paper. There's well the the uh, put the in on a pistols. suit and tie. Pretty soon we'll be saying, dude, I was into Suda like back when he was cool. <laughs> I don't think he was ever cool, but it's uh you know, the it's okay to get money. Sex pistols were punk rock, it's I guess. Not okay they were all to about get money. money. It's not okay to get money. All money is sin. Property is theft. Uh -huh. So give me your house, Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> I am worried that all these studios are closing. Um, I'm worried that better and better studios will start to close. And hopefully I'm wrong. We'll, we'll see. A lot of it's going to depend on how the next Sony and Microsoft consoles do. How much they cost and how much they cost to develop for. And how they go about getting games to people. And making sure that the customer feels cared about. Because if they don't do that, if Sony pulls another seven hundred dollar console, six seven hundred dollar console, that would be bad for them, and and worse if Microsoft follows that route. Well, so I don't think Sony's, I don't think Sony can do that. At this I point. hope so. I hope not. Uh, the but, economy's in the shitter mm. as it is. Uh, it, it's going to be hard. It's going to be a hard sell, I think, for new consoles in general. Like we're ready for them, but I don't know if. The market at large is ready to spend hundreds of hundreds of dollars on more consoles. You know, at the rate that we're used to seeing console launches be successful, I, I so they're going to have to keep the price down to get people to buy them. Um, that I said, hope that's, well, that's logic, and sometimes they use logic. That said. We we see the cycle all the time. We see mm. studios close down and then two more spring up in their place. The industry is like the fucking Hydra. Mm. Mm. I hope so. I like Hydras. And <laughs> so as, as much as we see these studios close down, we see just as many new ones crop up. And the smaller ones take on smaller budget products. Like 22 cans? Well... That dude's Kinda. nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I like that he's, guy. He's crazy he's, and a liar. Yeah, yeah. But he's fun. Um, he is fun. Yeah, and uh, hopefully he'll make a fun game. He has in the past. But yeah, so, you know, as we see these smaller projects come in, you'll still have those big budget titles, but I think that they're going to remain second-party development studios. And so you have... <coughs> excuse me. Uh, you'll have the new company springs up, and they get started on an idea... And then some of those get bought up by publishers. And those projects, you know, might be AAA or whatever. And then you'll have a lot of other mid-range, low-budget stuff that comes out of these uh, shifts as well. So I don't think it's unhealthy, necessarily, that we see a lot of, of, of closures. I think it's unfortunate. I think it's unsettling if you're involved in it. And, and it's something that, uh, you know, we should all, you know, be mindful of that, yes, it sucks for for them in, in the short term 
but the industry grows and changes all the time. And I think if you work hard and you're successful and you have a good record, a uh, good track record, you, you'll land and find work. Yeah, yeah, I hope so. Uh, so many people have changed roles in the industry, but still end up coming out on top. Um, so yeah, hopefully that'll happen for those guys too. Seems like even who got uh, who got vigils, who got darksiders. Anybody? No one got Darksiders. Still no Darksiders, huh? Uh, wasn't it... Did Crytek roll a vigil up into their operations? So, uh, someone, a lot of them. Someone the, picked Platinum up. was going to do something, too. I can't remember if that came through, though. Yeah, but as far as I know, Darksiders is just kaput. That's weird. I and My offer to buy it for five bucks... I don't know, $200, that's it. My, $200 still holds true. Whoever's got it, I'll have it. I'll do stuff yeah. with it. I, I know people that will make excellent video game graphics for you, for our Darksiders. For some money, but, you know, after the game comes out, you can pay them. It'll work out. Uh, Claire, who is at Hilda Tildy on Twitter, says she is trying to move away from her 360 to more PS3 use. What crazy cool PSN exclusive should I download? Huh. You guys got any? Uh, just off the top of my head, Tokyo Jungle, The Last Guy... Unfinished Swan, Journey, Flower, Flower. Those are fun games. I always really thought she was called Hilda. I'm furious. I don't know a Hilda now. I think her name is Hilda. Well, you just said she was called Claire. Well, yeah, that's her Twitter name, but Ugh. she's at Hilda Tildy. I yeah, think Claire is a Pokemon. If name? I don't know a real Hilda, I'm not interested. <laughs> do I know someone who's called Hilda or not, Jonathan? I think you do. <laughs> um, Brilliant. And it's not a PSN game, but it is a cheap game. Uh, Deadly Premonition Director's Cut's coming out on PS3 very soon. Hell yeah. That's very exciting. A um, little worried. I actually kind of liked the combat in Deadly Premonition. And I've heard they've changed it a lot to make it less cumbersome. So hopefully I'll still like it. I bet I will, but but you never know. I will never understand you. It's pretty fun. You stop and you shoot the guys. I don't have a problem with stop and shoot, but like, I mean, just even compared to say Resident Evil 4's stop and shoot, it is so painful. Really? Oh, I liked it. I mean, it's not as good as Resident Evil 4's, but it's uh, it was good. You stop and you, uh, you shoot them. Right, mean, this was a long time after Resident Evil 4, I think is what I'm getting <laughs> at there. Deadly Premonition, hmm. though, was just so, so wrong so much. That's oh, why so I like fun. It. it was just so fucking wrong. Everything about it was broken, but in a way that just made it glorious. Mm. Uh, I do worry almost that that making it quote unquote better will reduce the charm of it. But we'll see. I mean, the actual core content, the stuff that like entertained me to my very core, is still intact. So mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to it. I'm really tentatively a little bit, but I'm I'm predominantly really looking forward to it. And there's a new prologue and epilogue mm. stuff. So that's just any new content for that is exciting. So yeah, check that out. Did you guys have any uh, PSN exclusives for Claire, Hilda Tildy? Uh, I don't know. Flower, I obviously, is the... Yeah, I mean, you really mentioned all the yeah, good ones. Oh, Derek the Deathfin. Shatter. Oh, Shatter is quite oh, good. Yeah, Shatter, Shatter is, is, good. is fantastic. Yeah, that's a great mm -hmm. little game. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we did it. We did that question. We'll do uh, we'll do like two more. We're doing good. We're making people feel good with questions. Thirty-one questions came in. Bloody hell! Just while answering that question. Oh my god, that is ridiculous. Hey, it's it's catching on for some reason. Yeah. Pod toyed questions. Um, Conrad, who is Dare Green Ninja, says, "I just want to hear Jim talk about all the bravest a bit more. People like it when you talk about all the bravest, Jim." I'm so tired. It takes a lot of energy to just talk about what a despicable betrayal of self that is. And the betrayal of oneself it takes to buy it. Um, that's what really upset me was I got the receipts in. Um, I get emailed my iTunes receipts. And even though I'm going to write it off on my taxes, um, you know, it was a business thing. Even knowing that, I still hated myself probably more than i hated myself after playing and reviewing boob wars 
<laughs> like, that made me feel sleazy, but mm. Final Fantasy All the Bravest made me feel like buying it. Even I didn't buy all of it. Fuck no. You know, I only bought a few characters and stuff and, and bought the, the core game. But just that much just felt like I was stabbing my own soul in the back. It's like my soul floating around inside me, just, oh, hello, Jim. How are you doing today? And I'm like, I'm all right, so... Um, look, <laughs> look over there a second. Oh, what are you doing? Ah, why are you doing that to me? And I'm sorry, Sol, but I am a games reviewer now, and I don't need you anymore. But uh, everything's gone so bright. What are you doing? You know? No, don't hit the purchase. Do not purchase. I die now. <laughs> and that is how my soul died. Yeah, it's a, it's a scary game. It's a horror game to me. <laughs> uh, because I used to love Square Enix. They were my favorite um, game developer outside of... No, they were my favorite for a little while there. I think I was we like, all went through that phase. Yeah, but they're really my least favorite right now in a lot of ways. Um, the stuff they're turning out internally they're publishing a lot of good stuff from other people like um sleeping dogs and whatnot but yeah pretty scared i hope they don't keep sucking yeah it is almost at the point where i mean they they're all right as a publisher maybe final fantasy would be better served in someone else's hands you yeah, know i wonder, wonder i'd rather I... see someone else working on it uh, that's a weird feeling because that's it is them yeah Oh no! If they gave it to Mist Waker, I mean Mist Walker, or however you say it, if they just gave it back to the guy who made up Final mm. Fantasy, that would make me feel a little more hopeful. I mean, I get that what I'm saying is a total blasphemy, but Square Enix itself is has just become this heresy as a concept. Mm. It doesn't really matter what I say about it anymore. Uh, so give it to someone else. Well, I think that wanting. It's not a heresy uh, in that the people who made Final Fantasy really what it is aren't there anymore. And it's people who are kind of suckling at that. It's a weird suckle. Um, I guess this will be the last question. Eat fooder <laughs> on Twitter. Uh, my answer to that question is yes. <laughs> That's his name. Yep. At Eat Fooder. Who would win in a fight between you and MC Hammer? Oh, no, wait, I'm sorry. Some stupid twit. We can choose which one of these fight questions we want to answer. Um, I don't know, and in terms of who, I don't know if he means me or you or, uh, or you, Conrad. Or, or some stupid twit also asked, if you and Jim got in a fist fight, who would win? I, I, think, we've talk, I think we've talked about fighting before, me and you. We have? I think at least, I mean, that, it was, it's more or less the same question of, of when we... We're talking about me trying to have anal sex with you. Oh, right. It's very that... much a uh, how long can you last? <laughs> it's all it's all in that. It's like the cheetah in a way. You know, the cheetah has this supreme burst of speed, which makes it very deadly if it can get its prey in that small window of time. For a about a minute and a half, I am a deadly fighter. <laughs> We get past 90 seconds, and you can blow me over. <laughs> it's all about, can I land a punch in that small window of time? Because otherwise, you know, I'm wheezing, and you just have to push. So that would hurt if you punched me in the face. I think that's what it is. I've, I, I, I'm, I've, I've got a... I'm possessed of a raw animal strength, but mm. no stamina, it, whether I'm fighting or doing anything. Oh, fair enough. Yeah, I haven't um, fist fought, I don't think. There was that karate guy's time. That was a weird time outside the McDonald's. Woof. But uh, other than that, I can't speak to a real fight history. So I don't know. And MC Hammer, he's... Uh, I think we could all beat him up. <laughs> well, he's he's pretty pacifistic, I think. Um, mm -hmm. he's, you know, he's going, going with God. I mean, I'm all elbows. So, you know, you I, and, I, and I know how to throw them. Whoa, I wouldn't have uh, expected that. But, um, well, I mean, but the last time I was actually in a fight, 
of any kind was almost 20 years ago. Mm, yeah, I'm with you on that. Yeah, and, I think many of us have had... Lol. And it wasn't a fight. It was a dude tripped me and didn't... And like, And he did it intentionally. Like, he was trying to be a dick and then didn't have, like, the common courtesy to finish his humiliation of me by laughing about it. And that just insulted me. <laughs> like, go, come on. Go big or go home. So I, I, uh, I got up. And I sort of jogged up behind him, leapt onto his back, brought him to his knees, and put him into a chokehold until he begged me to let him go. And then I did. (laughs) And he punched me. (laughs) And that was it. And that was the last time I was in a fight. Every other situation I've been in that could have resulted in a fight, I either gracefully exited before it became an issue or intimidated my way out of. Yeah, I've 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 had good luck with that. I've I've told some stories like that before on Podtoid. Uh, the size advantage I have has led to me being able to just use visual intimidation to get out of fights. So I haven't I have had that much. Guy. Oh, oh, crazy people just think that I could kill them. <laughs> and it seems to work out really well. Uh, Nero has uh, told people who are like meeting me at the airport for the first time, look for the guy who thinks who, who you think is going to kill somebody. <laughs> As the visual description to locate me. And you it's have, worked. You have this kind of coiled cobra intensity mm. mm-hmm. of this kind of outwardly very docile and calm but with this sense that at any moment, like a scorpion strike, you could just lash, and then no one's alive. <laughs> yeah, I feel like Conrad may have a gun. Or <laughs> may, may know people who will come get me later. Like, he, he seems... He has a gravitas to him that you just don't... As an adult, especially, you know better than to mess with that. That's what, that's what I remember. And there's another question. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, go ahead. There's another question that came in that I I know I said that was the last one, but it's it's too good not to not to ask. Um, it's ain't it funny sixty nine again who last week asked us um, that he, he owes his mom. I thought it was one hundred and fifty dollars, and he owes a gay seventy two dollars. Do you oh. remember him? Oh yes, yeah, so we're revisiting this. He's back. Oh, yeah, and... I spoke to him earlier in the week after last Podtoid. Oh, good. Yeah, he just uh, confirmed that he didn't like gay people. But he's now saying, Podtoid question, I want to stop hating gays. <laughs> so, Jim, will you respect me? Please give me advice. Please advise him, Jim, on well, how to stop. Well, we spoke gays. about this in the week. But this is a good public question confirmed. to let everyone who hates gays, because there's he's not the only one. I've gotten uh, Podtoid requests. People say, I like your show, but listen, enough of the gay stuff makes me feel gay, and I don't know. No, thank you. Don't want to feel that way. Even though I listen to your show every week, it's a, it's a puzzle. So this isn't just for uh, Ain't It Funny 69. This is for many pod toy listeners who want to stop hating gays. How do they do it, Jim? Well, I mean, I've, what I told him was, like, y- you're a fan of mine. You say you like like me. I'm 50% gay. You don't hate half of me. Maybe re-examine your, your thoughts there. Clearly, I'm not hurting your life. Uh, so I would assume no other gay people, through virtue of their gayness, are hurting your life. If I'm, you know, if you've n- known my work and listened to me for two hours a week, and it's not, r- like, negatively affecting you in any way... Maybe examine that and say, why, why do you hate gay people at all? Because I, and that's what I said to this guy, and it seemed to click with him, because it's like, well, really, it is totally illogical. <laughs> it's weird how people, uh, they take things for granted as just true and false, good and bad. Uh, but if you actually stop and look at it a little bit, you can be like, oh, wait a minute. Maybe my preconceived notions of right and wrong, good and bad are uh, not so good. Yeah, I mean, I, okay. I just don't get it. Like, like, just because someone's gay, they're not going to just, like, try and have sex with you whether you want them to or not. Um, unless you're called Jonathan Holmes. 
in which case I will. <laughs> you have never. Let's be real, though. Because we don't want to keep that stereotype going that a gay no. guy will have sex with a not gay guy. You've never really tried to have sex with me a lot. <laughs> Um, no, and besides which, you know, I'm mm. a lot more interested in, in making you God or <laughs> or Father Christmas and attributing historical accomplishments to you now. Like, I've, you know, the whole... You have a special relationship. You wouldn't want to spoil that with sex. Yeah, no, that's it. It's, it's very much transcended the physical. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think now, you know, what I do for you, Jonathan... <laughs> Is beyond intimacy. What? How did, what what's the next step? Uh, the star it's... child. <laughs> know, like astral projection or some sort of weird... Yeah, it's, it, it's an astral something. <laughs> uh, you uh, it made no sense. No, I enjoyed it. I did. Uh, I guess we should talk about what we're doing this week. What yeah. are you guys doing? Should I start? I guess I will. Hey, go on. Why not? Yeah, sure. Uh, we had uh, Davy Reedon. Uh, is that how you say it? Reedon? Yeah, I believe so. Reedon, yeah. Oh, okay, hope so. He made the Stanley Parable, and he was a delightful guest. 24 years old, spoke with the age and wisdom of uh, a grandpapa. Boy, was he smart, and and uh, his priorities were right in the right place. He's really making stuff for the right reasons, and he was really funny, and humble, and insightful. And his game is also funny, humble, and insightful while being smart. It's hard to pull that off. Uh, we talked about how he managed to make a game that is about a lot of kind of high concept things, but doesn't come off like it's likes the smell of its own farts. And through comedy, simple guys be lighthearted. You don't have to be so serious all the time about your highfalutin smarty pants games. But anyway, he was a great guest. You can listen to that on iTunes and watch the rerun on Destructoid uh, TV. And this Sunday at 1pm Pacific Standard Time, Eastern Standard Time, we have Niels Anderson, I believe is his name. Niels or Nels? I, I'm not sure on that. I wonder if it's Nels. I'm going to find it might out. Be Nels. I think it's Nels, and I hope it's Anderson. That's an important <laughs> part of the name, too. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's spelled Anderson, but it's actually Kerflunk. <laughs> that would make me feel Yeah, I mean, go figure. <laughs> he made Mark of the Ninja and Shank. He didn't make it by himself, but he made some other really smart games that uh, aren't so much about the message the way Stanley Parable is, but they're still design brilliance, and he is fun and going to talk about how his studio went from getting some recognition mostly for their art style and for the fact that they were bringing back kind of a Streets of Rage type brawler with Shank to Mark of the Ninja, which just blew everyone's mind in the way that it brought the stealth genre back to two dimensions and did such elegant things with it that that uh, it was getting 10 out of 10s. We gave it a 10 out of 10 on the site. Um, well, we'll be talking about all that and whatever he wants to talk about. I'm very excited to have him on. So that'll be this Sunday live on Destructoid at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And other than that, I'm going to try to finish all these reviews. So look for my reviews on the site. Hopefully I can do them. How about you guys? Well, we got a whole bunch of video content that's been going up like all this week. It's pretty cool. Um, a lot of content in general. You guys yeah. are going nuts. It's going crazy. Um, so Spencer Spencer Hayes went out uh, around San Francisco and asked people which Dante they preferred. And it's really funny. Sure uh, is. So you want to you want to go check that out? Uh, we'll have an episode of Office Chat that's probably out by the time you hear this because i just got it back uh so it's going to be uploaded shortly and uh on that i'm with jordan and uh brett seidler and we talk a little bit about um the uh wii u virtual console 30 cent stuff which is pretty cool uh what they're doing there and um the dead island the dead island misrepresentative uh trailers all right comment. Yeah, I thought that was pretty interesting, uh, but with that had to be what was said there. So, anyway, 
doing an office chat and uh, got some other stuff that's almost ready to go. And I, it'll probably do something with this uh, Hitman that I just got. So look for that, too. And that's me, I think. Oh, and Saturday Morning Hangover this weekend, we're going to play uh, Skulls of the Shogun, which just came out. That game is great. Yeah, people are loving that game. So, yeah, that's uh, Saturday morning, uh, 10 a.m. Pacific, uh, 1 p.m. Eastern, uh, at Detroit.tv on Saturday. Yay. That's it. Awesome. Um, yeah, all sorts of video stuff's gone up. It's It's been cool to see it. It's like, because, you know, Destructor's always been... Um, Doing well. It's always doing well. But it hit this big peak a few years ago of just masses of content. Then it went back to a kind of standard level and just recently it's like someone's attached jump leads to its nipples. Uh, Lots of stuff. Lots of activity. Um, As for what I've been contributing to it on Destructoid, I recently did an article called Plus Points, Sony's PS Plus Humiliates the Game Industry, uh, which has done very well. Really good article. Uh, Really good article. Um, yeah, I mean, that's gone up on Reddit, uh, NeoGAF, N4G, <laughs> everywhere. Um, fucking hell. 2,000 shares over on the... And 480 tweets on that? That's, wow. That's not normal. Um, but awesome. People really... Can you imagine? Like, it, I did it in about an hour. I had a spare hour. And because I was going to do a, a new story the day before that um, Chris or Jordan had already done... Um, I just thought, well, that's there was some stuff I wanted to say about this, so I'll just I'll whip up a nice little article on it. I didn't expect, given the subject, much. You know, I thought there'd be some, I thought it'd do some nice, get some nice reactions and stuff, but wasn't expecting that. But that's cool. A lot of people still talking about that, so do check that out. Uh, what else did I do? I reviewed Boob Wars. Uh, why did you? Why did you review that Boob Wars? Why did you review it? <laughs> Why do I do anything, Jonathan? I think we've established I don't think about things. Um, I thought it would... Because here's the thing. I think a lot of people, when when Tony first brought it to people's attention on Destructoid, they thought it was going to be like a fun fighting game with just silly boob jokes and stuff. And, and then some sex, you know. They thought... A lot of people said, well, when I heard about boob wars, I thought, you know, you get a, a woman with the flat chest, you get a woman with the big breast, as is the, the subtitle. They fight in a fighting game, and then they get off with each other. But it's just a lot of, of creepy rape in real life. Um, why has it always got to be that way? Why? I, I'm not against cartoon sex, mm. but mm-hmm. it's always got to be rape. And I, why? Why can't it just be, let's have sex. Let's just have some great sex together. Um, but instead, two in these consenting games, a- animated characters getting their swerve on. Yeah, but here's the thing: the uh, publisher saw the review mm-hmm. and got back to me, and I have to respect this. Their uh, their answer was try this one. <laughs> what? <laughs> they had a different one. They have a different one, which and I've actually spoken to someone who's a fan of H games who was actually quite happy I reviewed this and said they said it was a shame I didn't try the good ones that aren't all just rape and very weak excuses of gameplay. Um, So I'm very tempted to try this one out. Um, It's not, you know, that direction with the sex, apparently. And it's a lot more... Starting down a dark, terrible path, Jim. And Mm. it's a lot more Phoenix Wright-like, apparently. Okay. Uh, so I may check it out, but it, I, I, Conrad's right. It's not a path I want to go to too far down, you know. Um, we're trying to review different things at the moment. We're, we're, we're trying to see, you know, what readers are interested in. We know everyone's interested in the big stuff, but what else do they want? Um, speaking of, the Euro Truck Simulator 2 review is going to go up tomorrow or Friday. Um, oh, good. Fingers crossed. I've made good inroads into that, in, into the writing of that. Um, so hopefully that'll go up very soon. Um, there was some other cool stuff, but um, it, over on The Escapist, I did this week's Jimquisition uh, called Breaking the Bones of Business, which has also done very well. That ties in with the whole microtransaction, Dead Space, Final Fantasy, All the Bravest, all that kind of stuff that's been in the news right now. Um, so that's cool. And also, uh, by the time this 
uh, Pod Podtoid goes up on Destructoid's front page on Thursday. A new movie, Defense Force, will be out on The Escapist. Uh, that's my movie review show. This week I'm talking about Waterworld. Uh, so that's it from me. Awesome. I yeah. can't wait to hear what you say about Waterworld. That's uh, a movie that I can't help but enjoy parts of. But to hear you give it a full-on defense will be quite interesting. My uh, wife really likes that movie. It's a great film. It really is a great film. I'll, have to, watch, I'll have to watch your episode to, uh, to try and get some, some justification for that. Because it's, it's an interesting film. I, I find it interesting in terms of like the, product, the production and the cost that was required. And, and how like the story around Waterworld... I'm curious to know more about. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I think that's why it got a lot of hate was a lot of people hate it because, you know, it ruined Kevin Costner's career, etc. Uh, and I think a lot of the hatred it gets isn't related to the actual film. Um, but, you know, I've got the video coming out, so watch that if you'd like on The Escapist. And, and I guess that's it for us for another week on Podtoid. Uh, yet again, let's do a quickie and... Here I am signing off at the usual time. Um, but thank you all for listening, and thank you to my co-hosts for coming along, and we'll, we'll all see you next week. Christ. Yeah, it's hard to talk sometimes. Yeah. Bye-bye.